Hi, Robert McClemon here with another quick video for students in ES 101 at Wilfrid Laurier University. This one's a quick introduction to the fourth lab in the course in which we examine what happens when our environmental interests in protecting endangered species come into conflict with our economic interests in resource or land development. Now, this question is one that we don't need to travel too far from the Laurier campus to explore. In the south end of Kitchener, there's a road called River Road, which, as the name implies, runs along the Grand River, or fairly close to it for much of its length. Now, a couple years ago, the city of Kitchener and the region of Waterloo decided it would be a good idea to expand and extend River Road. And so they went ahead with their plans to do so. But they found out that the route that they had planned for the ex road extension ran through habitat uh, where you will find the Jefferson salamander and the Jefferson salamander is on Ontario's endangered species list. Now what that means is that by law, the city of Kitchener, the region of Waterloo, are not allowed to do anything that might disturb salamanders or disturb their habitat. That creates a problem when you want to blast a road through some forest. So what's happened is that the engineers have gone back to the drawing board and they've come up with an alternative routing for the road uh, but that will cost an extra $72 million on top of the costs that had already been budgeted for this project. Now there are several considerations uh, that are particular to the Jefferson salamander. The first is that uh, it's a fairly common species in the northeastern United States, but here in Ontario it's only found in about 20 or 30 particular locations as far as we know. And most of these locations are on the outskirts of Metro Toronto, uh, Hamilton, Kitchener-Waterloo, fairly heavily urbanized areas where there's a lot of pressure on the land to develop it for housing, for industry, for roads and things like that. Uh, it's, it is widespread in the United States but it is a protected species and a rare species here in Ontario. The type of habitat that it likes is a, a forested slope overlooking a, a wetland or, or a waterway. And so what happens is that the Jefferson salamander spends most of its adult life living in coarse woody debris like you're seeing in these images that I'm showing you now, well, underneath logs and rocks and, and in the, the litter on the forest floor. But when it comes time to breed, the salamander makes its way downslope into the wetlands complex or into the waterway and that's where it has its offspring. And so to have a healthy Jefferson salamander population, you need to have these forested hill slopes that are, are undisturbed and uninterrupted so that the salamanders can get down to the water down below. And that's a challenge here uh, in this particular case because this part of the Grand River down in the south end of Kitchener is already fairly heavily uh, developed. Now what you'll find is that Highway 8 and its six lanes of traffic go cutting through this area. You've got River Road, you've got lots of smaller roads in the area. You've got housing developments like these luxury homes that I'm showing here in the clip now. Uh, there's a golf course on the south shore of the river. So there's already a lot of uh, human development in this area. And so what has happened is that um, the, the, the reality is that you can't put this road through any more of the undisturbed habitat that's, uh, that still remains in that area. And that's the law of the land. No matter how much Kitchener or Waterloo region wants to, uh, to push a road through this habitat, by law they are prevented from doing so. And so as you can imagine, this has uh, stimulated a bit of controversy about the fact that there's this, uh, you know, an extra $72 million in costs necessary to reroute. Uh, the road around the salamander habitat, I suppose making it a fairly expensive uh, salamander. But I guess this is one of the challenges that we face in environmental studies, isn't it? Because it's easy enough in the classroom or in the textbooks to say, uh, you know, when we're doing development for land use or resource use, we need to take a sustainability approach. We need to consider the economic, social, cultural, and environmental consequences of any decisions that we make before we take action. And while that sounds great in theory and practice, uh, it sometimes happens that our economic interests and the interests of the environment are diametrically opposed. And so no matter what comes out of uh, the decisions, someone is going to be unhappy. So what we're going to do in this lab coming up is that you're going to meet with your lab instructor and with your fellow students and you're going to go through a variety of exercises to really get into a, a detailed discussion about what we should be taking into consideration and what sort of factors are important when we talk about 
ecological and in economic uh, interests and when they collide. And you'll watch some short videos and we'll talk first about salamanders and then we'll move on to something called the spotted owl. Now the northern spotted owl is native to forests in western Canada and western, the United, western United States. And 20 years ago it was in the headlines quite frequently. The northern spotted owl likes to nest and live in old growth forest in western North America. And so that puts it directly in conflict with logging industries that want to harvest timber. And so there was a, a large number of court cases and legal battles and public protests uh, b that pitted environmentalists against the forestry industry back in the 1990s. So what you're going to do in your assignment for this lab, and you'll do some of the, the exercises in the lab uh, room itself, but the written assignment asks you to do two things. One is to envisage a scenario where you are a judge and you are forced to make a decision between protecting owl habitat and allowing logging to go forward in a particular area. And you will find that it's actually a fairly difficult decision to make when you take into account all the other factors. The second thing you're going to do is that it's now been more than 20 years since the spotted owl controversy. So with the benefit of hindsight, uh, we're going to ask you to do a little bit of research and give us an update on the status of the spotted owl. How is it doing? Is it still on the endangered species list? Have populations recovered? And let us know, generally speaking, uh, what came out of the spotted owl controversy a couple decades ago. So I hope you enjoy this, uh, this particular lab and I'll see you in the classroom. Thanks a lot.